Go. So we're gonna do our final food tests. Uh, we're gonna run the Benedict's test for sugars, and we're gonna look at the results of the grease spot test for lipids. I'm gonna get the Benedict's test rolling, and while this is cooking for its three minutes, we'll look at the, uh, the Lugol's test. Or not the Lugol's test, the grease spot test. So, like we did with the Biorette, I've got a whole bunch of ground stuff up in the test tubes. I'm just going to pour Benedict's over it. It will not change on contact, so I don't have to worry about that. But I need it to start blue, so if it changes color, I'll know it changed color. Now, Benedict's is the one that I, we are going to have to run a color control on. I'll show you that when I'm done pouring this stuff out. And so is the Mountain Dew, which is turning green, mixing the yellow Mountain Dew with the blue Benedicts. Now, this orange is a possible uh, positive for Benedict, so I've got to do a color control on this, so I'm putting the color control blue on it. I don't know if meat is a, is a possible confuser. Red is sort of a positive for Benedict's, so, um, but I'm gonna run a color control for the meat. I'm gonna run a color control for the uh, regular Mountain Dew. Get a very similar color when, I do, when it mixes together colors. And for the Diet Mountain Dew. And then the question will be, we're about to cook them, so that might actually change the colors and we, we need to know if that's gonna be true or not. Okay, I'm gonna do, I think, five test tubes at a time. So it's pretty obvious what's in the test tube, so I don't really need to worry about the order I put them in. I'll be able to tell even though they're gonna cook up. So I need to start my timer. I got a nice timer now that's gonna run for three minutes. And I'm gonna put my carrots and my bread and my potato and my apple and my meat in the boiling water, get a little bit warmer so it really boils. And we will count down for the three minutes while we're doing that. This is the, the paper that we did the uh, spots on. And the question is, did the stuff evaporate or did it leave a wet spot? And the final question is, does the light come through it? You want to be below it so the light, you can see if the light comes through it. You see in light through these spots. So now, now that you've figured out what spots still have light come through, see okay. what they're labeled. Here, stand up and hold it up. up. Well, okay. why are you standing up yeah. with me then? No, no, stand, hold it above your head so, so I can get. <coughs> the director speaks. Okay, so we still got some time to cook here. I found myself a test tube holder so I can take the things out without burning my hands. I did not put the color controls in with the food because I didn't want to lose track of what was what. Having two test tubes in there, both with carrots, was potentially going to be bad. Now, the trick there is to make sure you start with a decent wet spot. Okay, we're counting down to about a minute now. It's in there cooking. I'm going to grab another test tube rack so that I can set it up in a different rack.
Okay, we're almost ready to go with this. Okay, so we will get out the carrots. We will get out the bread. Wow, you're so bossy. We will get out the apple. Get out the potatoes. Get out the, oh no, that's, that's the meat. <laughs> but, yeah, I can't get, yeah, you're still too close, okay. Okay, I'm gonna put some more in the water. So I'm gonna start the timer again. and put the diet soda in. And because this is only going to be a little confusing, I put it in so that looking down at the beaker, they go around clockwise. Because the two sodas, they should be easy to tell apart once they react. But, see so you had plenty of time to get the results of that once we had the other set in there. So while we're waiting, you have questions to answer on the very last page. Very last page. You should be able to see the page, so I don't need to hold it up in front of the, uh, the, the camera. But I will talk to you about it. For the first exam, you needed to know the difference between qualitative data and quantitative data. Qualitative is just kind of a sliding scale. Yes and no is qualitative data. Is it there? Is it not there? Quantitative data is we can make a scale out of it because there are differences we can make a scale out of. We can put numbers to it. And your first question is, of the tests that we ran, which ones could we make quantitative? Which ones could we invent a scale for? Because we get different results for different amounts. And the second question is, once you've decided what that works for, tell me how you would set up the, the quantitative part. Um, question three, we're running color controls. If we had not run color controls on the first part, there was still a control in every test because it matches the classic definition of a control, something else you needed to know for the first exam. So the question number three is, what in the first test that's not a color, color control was still a control, and why was it a control? Number four, look at your table for the food test results and tell me what happened that you expected something different to happen. Where you went, I didn't think there was sugar in this, or I was sure there was protein in this, or just discuss a couple where the results you got don't match the results you expected to get. And then question five, we have two carbohydrates. We have sugars and starches. But the sugar test doesn't pick up starches, and the starch test doesn't pick up sugars. And the question is, so why not? And here, what I'm really asking is whether you know the differences between sugars and starches, because that's going to explain why the tests don't pick up the other ones. So if you tell me the differences, you'll be fine. OK, we're running in on this. Let me turn this around. Okay, here's the water. Milk. Here's the regular soda. Here's the diet soda. I'm going to put the four color controls into the water and start the timer. Now, your job is to report the results and decide from the results whether there are uh, sugars in the things you're looking at. Now, I will tell you, I'm seeing a result I didn't expect to get, and I'm not entirely sure why, but I've, I've noticed uh, in previous 
semester is that since I switched to Mountain Dew, that there's a result I did not expect to get and that they did not expect to get. I do believe the, the diet Mountain Dew may be lying. But those are your results for the, the last uh, four of the uh, things on the table. And you'll notice when you cook blue water, it stays a very nice shade of blue. It doesn't really do much of anything. So being a good lab person while it's cooking and I don't have anything else to do, I'm going to do some cleanup. I'm going to put my bottles back. I'm going to take my piece of paper that I used and use it to clean up the tabletop. Break anything. About a minute and a half in. In between the videos, I have cleaned out my test tube, set them upside down near the sink, and uh, now they're dry enough to go back into the box. So the next people who use them, I tell you never to trust anybody, they'll be clean for them. Cheap. We use these things over and over and over again. The one thing that didn't happen that generally happens during the lab is uh, no test tubes got broken. Okay, we're into the last minute. You'll notice that uh, of all four color controls, the results you're getting are just blue. So even cooking the carrots doesn't really make the color change. Uh, that's something you can be sure of until you cooked it. Uh, cooking the uh, the Mountain Dew, cooking the uh, the soda doesn't really uh, make a change in a significant way that could be confusing, and that's really what the controls are for. You know, are you getting a confusing result that you can't trust because the colors are mixing in a weird way? We're down to almost ten seconds to go. Once the water is boiling, it always stays the same temperature. That's why it's a very good standard for, for heating things up. And I should have mentioned this before, um, where everything else atmospheric and everything else is the same, a drop of water is always the same size, which is why you can use it as a measurement. Uh, if you are way up on a mountain, the drops will be a slightly different size. If you're using a different liquid, the drops will be a different size. But because of the way the water molecules hold together on each other, and uh, you need to know that for the second exam, uh, cohesion is that water drops are a trustworthy size, so you can just use it as a measurement. Okay, that's it for the lab. Uh, fill out your forms, uh, fill out your tables, answer your questions, and, uh, and send them in, and, uh, and you will be done. <laughs>